Do you think George Floyd is in heaven? A lot of people consider him a saint who was murdered by people who hate him, but let's take a look at his life to see where he might be now. In a recent documentary made by Candace Owens, the world is introduced to Floyd's former roommates Alvin and Teresa Scott. In the interview, Alvin shows Candace to George's room, and he said that he had a desk in the corner where he always had a Bible out on it. Teresa said that she and George would read the Bible together a lot, and he would read Proverbs and Matthew a lot. She would hear him through the bedroom wall reading his Bible at night, and she also said that the day he died, she and he prayed at the top of the stairs for several minutes together, longer than they ever had before. She asked him to promise he'd come back, and he promised, but he never returned. She later said, the Floyd that I knew in this house was a good person, but the next sentence that she says is really critical. But if he did do something bad, he hid it from us. If he did it out there, he did it out there. That's his business. He never brought it home. George always struggled with addiction, but he kept it outside the home. If you look into the story, you can see the evidence of this struggle. Per the official autopsy report, he didn't have any life-threatening physical injuries, but he had fatal amounts of fentanyl and methamphetamine in his body. Thinking about George, take a second with me and consider the parable of the sower. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he was sowing, some seed fell along the path and the birds came and devoured it. Some fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun rose, the seedlings were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the seedlings. Still other seed fell on good soil and produced a crop, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, or thirtyfold. The first seeds are people who hear the word but don't understand it. They move on with their lives and never accept the things of God. That didn't seem to be George, as he read his Bible so much. The second seeds are people who are overnight apostles, who immediately loudly proclaim the gospel, and maybe they're really joyful people, but eventually they burn out and they forget the joy that they had, and they kind of just go back to the lives that they originally had. That didn't seem to be George either. He struggled with his faith a lot, but he continued in it. The last seeds are people who hear the word and consistently obey it. They become models of righteousness and virtue, and as much as George read his Bible and prayed and seemed to have faith in God, I don't think he really attained that point yet. But the third seeds, the ones who fall on the thorns, are the ones who get kind of swept up by life. They put their attention on worldly things more than they do on Christ. And again, as much as he read his Bible and prayed, up until the day that he died, he still struggled with addiction and crime. I think he got caught up in all that stuff, and it killed him. Fortunately, it's not our works that secure us a place in heaven, only faith in Christ. I can't say for certain whether he was saved, same as anyone else, but I do think it's possible to reasonably assume his salvation given what we know, despite his personal issues. Remember though, in Matthew 7.21 it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. The will of the Father is belief in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So be cautious when people say that they're Christians. They have to have a legitimate faith in God to be an actual Christian. George Floyd had a lingering drug addiction, and he struggled with crime throughout his life, but I think his story can be a source of inspiration for anybody out there because he's proof that nobody's really too far gone. You can commit crimes and have drug addictions and do all these terrible things, but God's promise to us is that if we have faith in him alone, we are saved, not by doing correct things. And hopefully that's the case with George. Another person in the news recently with a similar situation is Jeffrey Dahmer. Everyone is talking about him because of the new Netflix docu show reenacting his terrible crimes. It's said that Dahmer converted to Christianity before his death when he was in prison, but does that excuse his hellish deeds on earth? One of my favorite channels, What Do You Meme, went further than anybody else when talking about Jeffrey Dahmer recently because he actually sat down for an interview with the guy who was Jeffrey Dahmer's prison pastor and one of his only friends by the time he died, Roy Ratcliffe. I highly recommend watching it to get the full story. There are many people though that just don't want Jeffrey Dahmer to be in heaven. Quick warning, Christian TikTok is currently celebrating Jeffrey Dahmer being in heaven in case you don't want to see that. What if I told you that serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer became a Christian while he was in prison and went to heaven when he died? Is Jeffrey Dahmer in heaven? If it offends you that Jeffrey Dahmer professed his faith in Jesus Christ, maybe you don't realize how big of a sinner you are as well. Sin is sin. A lie is just as much of a sin as murder. Is it possible after murdering 18 people, Jeffrey Dahmer's in heaven right now? Absolutely. Imagine Jeffrey Dahmer, a serial killer who commits unspeakable, terrible crimes throughout his life. And in his short time in prison before he's murdered, he apparently, purportedly, converts to Christianity. Is that enough to wipe away his sins? 
Well, as much as it might sting for us here on Earth to say this, according to the Bible, it does. But like with George Floyd, that's something that only Jeffrey Dahmer and God know the answer to, not us. This is a perfect example of how the teaching of heaven and hell in the evangelical church is so f***ed up. I think someone who murdered like 17 people can go to heaven and be rewarded for eternity because at the last second they confess Jesus as their savior. But someone could be completely good, only put love into the world their entire lives, and burn for eternity in hell because they just don't believe in God. To anyone who thinks like this, and especially this girl, I have two questions. The first being, what do you mean when you say you only put good into the world? And the second one being, imagine if God removed all evil from the world at 11.59 tonight. Do you think you'd be here in the morning? These two stories, and hopefully testimonies of both George Floyd and Jeffrey Dahmer are fascinating, and if you like that, you'd be fascinated by this video where a guy goes further than claiming to be a Christian and claims to be God. I'll see you next time.